All right, I just weighed anchor from uh, Beaufort, and I'm heading out the Beaufort Inlet right now. Got some wind now. It's kind of on our nose. Uh, maybe 10 knots of wind. It's pretty good. So we'll probably just kind of tack our way around the Cape Lookout uh, sandbar shoal thing that sticks out there. And uh, sun's about to go down. And we'll do some night sailing on our way over to Bermuda. Choppy waves out here. Wind versus current. Always makes it a little exciting. At least the current's in our favor though. Sails are up and everything feels so much better. The boat's really calmed down a lot. It does not like motoring straight into the wind. I right, switched from wind from electronic gizmo to wind vane. All right, wind vane is connected. It's doing good. Yield about five degrees. Get some stay home sailing size waves. The sails look so good. I'm not sure why I'm wearing Crocs. These are horrible boat shoes. Let's hope the five months of working on the boat at the workshop was is, is going to pay off. Right now it feels like it is. It feels good to be back on the water, man. I could trim this in a little bit. quick look at the chart you can see we're coming out the Beaufort Inlet and we need to go about uh, looks like 14 miles to get around that Cape Lookout Shoal definitely don't want to sail through there with any wave action and there's where we left in Oriental yes uh, this morning so the sun's going down and I've got my my cozy spot on the boat of course I can use my mirrors to see what's in front of me every once in a while I look around it looks like we might clear the uh, Lookout Shoal without having to do any tacks and once we get around and we're gonna bear off and man we'll be really we'll be really hauling then. You know, we're doing like four and a half knots now, we'll probably be doing six knots then. Get hundred miles today. Here I'm playing with a little simulation of what uh, a potential routing might be. You can see it's kind of keeping us uh, a, a little bit north and then swooping down about two thirds to avoid a high pressure system. Of course uh, things will change. I settled in for my nap series, and there is diesel everywhere. I just pulled up the carpet. I'm using it to soak it up, and then I'm going to put the carpet out in the cockpit. I noticed where it was coming from as I was, was motoring out. Um, I noticed first the leak while, when I was refueling. I put an extra hose clamp on it, tighten it up, and that didn't fix it. It was, it was actually leaking in two places um, when we uh, put that... the. Uh, new fuel when I put that new fuel tank in I didn't do a very good job I think it's actually coming from the uh, return line from the tank I think so hopefully now that the motor is off and not pumping fuel through the return shouldn't leak anymore I'll, I'll take a look uh, kind of sucks but could be worse I'm nothing's gonna well nothing yet has been able to dampen my mood just gonna stick the carpet outside. The carpet worked good to soak it all out, but I'll throw it outside in the cockpit. Well, I guess that couldn't last forever. Uh, <clears throat> our wind died down about four knots, which is way too little wind for the amount of uh, waves we have. And they're pretty short period waves. So we're just kind of bobbing around, sails flopping, really hard to keep it on course. But I got to keep it away from the shoal, so I have to kind of do something. So I'm just kind of hand steering because the wind vane's like, I mean, it's, we're just pitching around and, can't, and the wind's too light to kind of hold the vane. It's day number two of my passage from North Carolina to Bermuda. We didn't make much progress at all last night. I mean, we moved, we kept, we were cruising probably averaging about two knots and now we're going just a little less than two. Uh, the winds are pretty light and they're kind of uh, on the aft quarter. So uh, 
Fortunately, now the sea state has calmed down. It was pretty wavy and the sails were flapping around and that was slowing us down more. I think if the trend continues, uh, I think the, the, the water will flatten out a little more and the wind will maybe hold this or maybe pick up a little more, but we should be able to go a little faster if, we, if the boat will stop rock pitching around all, all over the place. But uh, <clears throat> I've got some projects to do. So I'm gonna go start uh, crossing those off the list. My uh, kind of bulwark is interfering with the, uh, the Genoa sheet. So I'm gonna see if I can just raise it up in the back here a little bit. Start by loosening it up. I'm gonna put a life jacket on just cause I'll be kind of hanging out there. We got the first one free. You can see the no chafing anymore. I just got the other side done as well. And then uh, my next order of business is I've got this uh, polypropylene line. It's pretty strong and it, and it floats. So I'm going to put a splice in the end and then I'm gonna attach the fender up there. I'm gonna attach that to here and tow that behind me. And then if I fell overboard and my tether broke or something, I'd have a chance to, to grab this line and pull myself back on the boat. Hopefully I don't fall overboard and hopefully if I do, my lifelines catch me and my tether holds me on. And hopefully that, if those don't work, the tether keeps me in the water near the boat. But if all else fails, it's good to have, you know, one more, one more sense of backup, just kind of belt and suspenders. A lot of people say the boats are, would be sailing too fast to be able to pull yourself up by a line, but I've jumped off the boat all the time while it's moving and I've got no problem ever pulling myself back in um, up to maybe four, four, maybe five knots, maybe probably six or seven probably might be more difficult i haven't tried that yet but it's pretty easy to grab the fender and the floating line so i think it's a valid valid safety method here's our our splice i probably went a little further than i needed to just because i mean this line's kind of slippery and i, I don't want to have to have it come undone um, i'm just going to kind of cut these off to feather out the end That should be good and strong. I'm gonna go grab that fender and I'll tie this on this uh, kind of overinflated fender in Maine on a beach. And it's a nice polyform fender. Um, I usually, I have it tied up when I'm close to shore by the anchor in case I need to drop the anchor somewhere so I can come and get it later. Um, but then when I'm offshore, I think these, uh, these round ones, they tow a little better. The long ones sometimes they get pulled underwater and I feel like that would slow me down more and make it harder to find. So let's tie this guy up. All right, that's all secured there. Just do a little soft shackle on that. Let's throw this guy overboard. And this line floats too. So in the first 24 hours, we made it 66 nautical miles. Not that impressive, really. Um, and I'm gonna mark it on my, my paper chart just for fun. Uh, here's our position on June 6th. We left right there. And we have to go to there. And we need to go on the south side of the island to get there um, as reefs on the north side, I think. So now I'm gonna update my, my weather charts just to see where, uh, I don't know, the the models say the wind should be. And they're a little bit lighter than was forecast in my one from yesterday. So I'll just start up the Iridium Go. You turn that guy on. Um, and then plug in the uh, the antenna. That's over here. So it looks like we got lots of bars of signal. Let's give this a shot. Takes about three minutes to download a 35 kilobyte file from the, the satellites in space. There you have it, the forecast looks great. We should be getting into stronger wind in no time. So I figured I'd wanna check the uh, battery since I've been running the autopilot. These, these, these little tiller pilots don't use much power though. So we can see we're, we're, the solar panels are net gain. What's our amp hours? 94 amp hours in the battery. So we're almost full again, even after running that thing all night long and it being kind of cloudy in the morning, but the, now the sun's pretty much out. It's really warming up, so I'm gonna turn my fans back on. These things are best. We got quite a few ships out here. We're 
only about uh, we're still only 30 miles from shore, so I still have a lot of ships to contend with. I'm curious if we'll keep seeing ships all the way uh, to Bermuda and then all the way to the Azores, or if uh, we'll be like Hawaii and we just stop seeing them after a few days. Uh, open up the hatches. Get a little air in here. We'll see if I regret that choice. I'm gonna get the uh, aft one too. So our our, uh, our drift uh, increased a considerable amount just now. I think we must have gotten into the Gulf Stream. Uh, other than that, you can't really tell much by the water. Some people say you can see it, maybe some places, sometimes you can, but uh, I think right, right here off the coast of North Carolina, I don't really notice any difference. It's good conditions to be crossed being the Gulf Stream for sure. I got some more 3D printed parts to put on the boat. This is some more knobs and that's my window, window loosening tool. And then this is the knob for the for the shutters. Should just snap right in. Perfect. One of the downsides of the bulwark is it kind of blocks your view a little bit. I just watched some movies and I found some spare Dyneema so I made some more of these uh, soft shackles. These things are just super useful for, for I don't know, connecting lines to various things and stuff like that. I'm going to add an extra USB socket. This one has USB-C. So right there looks good. Alright, wouldn't be a Sam Home sailing episode without drilling some holes in my boat. So the wind moved a little bit forward of the beam now, which is made it meant I was able to take out the whisker pole and uh, also trim the mainsail in a little bit. And now we're not really moving any faster, but it feels a lot more comfortable. Also, the waves are coming at us uh, pretty much directly on. I noticed this little uh, twist lock, it, it separated right here at the end. So I'll just take one of these off and I'll put it back on the boom. All right, I got that back attached and I'll just have to pick up another one of these. Next order for today is the wind vane. See that 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 thick tube? Um, that should be shoved up inside the aluminum casting. Uh, I'm not sure how that came loose as a set screw. Must have not been tight enough. So I just need to flip this out of the water, and I can sort that out. back in the ocean swell, kind of getting the rhythm of things. So we're moving along pretty good. I can do a whole passage like this. I mean, that's kind of what the forecast is about like this the whole way. You know, can't complain about good weather. Still got some ships out on the horizon. Having to clip in again. Not so fun, but you just gotta make it a habit and then it's no big deal. I wish these would stay up higher though. This is definitely nice to grab onto going forward. Making some uh, bacon and eggs for dinner. Pretty yummy. About midnight and the wind just really really picked up um, I had to bear off a little bit and we're doing we're doing seven knots which is awesome um, yeah we're, we're cruising now we'll do 100 miles today for sure day number three the speeds have really picked up we averaged four and a half knots um, over the last 20 hours and yeah we're on track to do well over 100 100 nautical miles today
I've got a list of chores I'm gonna do. I try to kind of keep busy, because otherwise I just end up napping and uh, watching videos and reading all day. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to get a few things done each day. And then when I get where I'm going, hopefully the boat will be in a lot better shape than uh, when I left. That's, that's always the goal for a long passage like this. Kind of keeps my mind uh, in better shape and better, feel better at the end of the day if I've, I've done, done some stuff and gone outside, walked around the boat, things like that. So I'm gonna put a little bit of chafe protection on the, uh, around that back shroud where it kind of rubs against the rail. So I got some of this, uh, I think it's old like fire hose. And uh, my volunteer and friend Christine got me this. So I think I'll wrap this around the, uh, the shroud and zip tie it on there just to kind of, that's just tough stuff to keep it from chafing. So here's our potential problem area. Let's wrap that up. I also noticed the wind vane was covered in seaweed, so I just I just took got the seaweed off. Looks like there's already one more piece. I see a lot of seaweed floating around out here. There's another big one right there. So I think this will be a new, probably a multiple times a day thing. Clear seaweed off the wind vane. Zip tied this on there. I think that ought, ought to do the job. I think the jib would be a little happier right now if it had its whisker pull out there. So I'm gonna go forward and deploy the pole. It's safer and ultimately easier just to roll the sail up every time I want to put the pole in and out. Snicker halyard had gotten wrapped up at the top. I think I sorted that out and I moved it to the outside and back of the shroud so hopefully that'll keep it out of the way. I'll have to keep an eye on that because that would be a really bad thing to happen in a squall or something wherever they really need to get that sail in. Let's see if it furls now. Ship out here. It's massive. So I've been doing more research about uh, weather forecasting models, and I found one that does currents. It looks like our current course would have us heading right solidly into a, uh, a three-knot counter current, and uh, that would also be countering the wind, which would. That'd be good for a sea state right against us. We wouldn't be going anywhere, basically. So I think I'm gonna change our course and we'll head a little further south. Here's a diagram so you can see that Gulf Stream over on the left. That's the big, strong northeast current. And then here's that counter current I'm talking about. And uh, just kind of sprung up right as we're passing through it, which uh, my routing obviously didn't account for it. So I'd like to duck underneath it. And you can see it looks even above, just above three knots going going through there. Okay, it would really be no fun, and, but then most of the oceans that doesn't look too bad. These are these are all like less than half a knot until we get there. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to cut this video into a, a second part, which won't come out for a couple weeks once I uh, get to the Azores. Uh, but but tune in next time when I'll we'll have the, the second part where the weather picks up and I sail the rest of the way into Bermuda. 
Uh, if you got anything out of this video and want to make a contribution, links are in the descriptions. And if, or if you'd like to uh, track my progress uh, to the Azores and beyond, I'll have a link in the description for that too. I'll see you guys next time.